So we know, wrote down our warm-up, uh, when we're multiplying, we do outside times the outside. Five times three is what? Fifteen. And then, hey, please don't talk about this. Stick in your brain. So square root and then inside times the inside. Six times fifteen is ninety. Right, the inside times the inside. Now, can we break it down? So 90, always start with 2. 2 times 45. Uh, 2 does not go into 45. Let's try 3. So, 3 times 15. And then 15 also breaks down into 3 times 5. Now, do I have any pairs? Pair of three, and I have a outside 15 that's already out there, right? So if I have a coefficient, it multiplies with my pairs. 15 times three, 45 on the outside. And then I have two loners, two and five. What's two times five? Okay, so 45 square root of 10. All right, so that's multiplying. What about dividing? So outside divided by the outside. Now, 2 over 3 doesn't reduce. Now, some of y'all noticed on the last assignment, there's fractions, and what do you do? So here's an example. So 2 over 3 is going to stay 2 over 3. Uh, what about square root of 60 over square root of 3? So 60 divided by 3 is 20. So that's square root 20, right? Okay, so that would be okay, but let's try to reduce it. 20 breaks down, 2 times 10, and 10 is 2 times 5. Do I have a pair? A pair of 2, and here's the part where it's like, what do I do? So, I got a circle 2, and I have a fraction in front, right? Now, when you multiply to a fraction, you only multiply it with the top. If you multiply it with top and bottom, it'll end up reducing to the same fraction. It doesn't need to change it at all. So. This 2 times this 2 is what? 4. Still going to be over 3. And what's my leftover loner? Square root 5. Okay. Now, what else is on the board here? So, uh, grades are due Friday. Everything is due Friday. This is Marrero was here today after school, and I'm here tomorrow after school. And in the morning, I'll be here tomorrow, but I have a meeting at 8. So 7 to 8, super early. Or Friday, 7 till the bell. Whenever you get here, I'll be here. Okay? Or if I'm not in the room, I'll be right back. That'll work. Uh, let's talk about reducing, uh, sorry, rationalizing denominators. That's our objective. This will be a nice, short, and sweet notes. And it's a short assignment. Just eight problems. Oh, I feel nice today. By the way, I'm, today I'm putting in all four of these green assignments, right? Simplifying radicals. Let me point to it here. This one, putting that in, putting that in, putting that in, and putting that in. So if you haven't been doing the last four assignments, or if you haven't finished them, turn those in ASAP. But we're going to do this real quick. And since it's going to be real quick, there should be no complaining about taking out the headphones because we know that's how we do it every day. So let's do that. Here we go. All right, so everyone's with me. So if you got a phone in your hand, you're looking at it, and it's red, yeah, you can put that away. Now, look at All right, both ears. Headphones off, right? Headphones away. You got headphones in? All right, so here we go. Okay, now, when we did dividing radicals, here's one thing I didn't tell you about. This is what makes it a little bit harder. That's why I split it up separate days. All right?
So you cannot have a radical on the bottom. Oh my gosh, did you see there's a radical on the bottom? That's just like cussing in math. No radicals on the bottom. No, no, no. All right, so it's it's bad news when you have a radical on the bottom. So that means when, when you see a when you see a radical on the bottom, you gotta do something. You do it. Take it out. Take it. Thank you. Ooh, that's what they all say. Okay, so take it out. No, I know that you need to hear what I'm saying. So I d d d d So here we go. Everybody. So since square root on the bottom is no good, we have to get rid of it. Here's how. Okay. To remove it, you're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator of the fraction by the same radical. That's it. So let me show you how it's done. First example. Two over the square root of three. I see a square root on the bottom. Can't be there. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the bottom by the same square root. We learned this two days ago on the note, that if you multiply a square root times the same square root, you get the number without the square root sign. Right? Square root of 3 times square root of 3 will be just 3. Okay? So that removes the square root. Cool? Now, but if I do it on the bottom, i got to do it on the top. So on the top, I'm going to put times square root of 3. Okay? Now, on top, if you have a whole number times the square root sign, you just put them right next to each other. So a 2 times the square root of 3 is what? Listen to what I said. If you have a number and a square root, put them next to each other. So 2 times square root of 3 is 2 square root of 3. You can't multiply them. They're not the same thing. Okay. Now on the bottom, we did say square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. I'll say it again. Square root times the same square root removes the square root sign. And that's it. So this ugly fraction is the answer. And this is more acceptable than having a square root on the bottom, which you heard Ms. Morrow say is like, uh, I cut. Okay, but now, try some examples. On number one, is there a square root on the bottom? There is, though, and you cannot have a square root of 2 on the bottom. It's just like it. All right, now, so how do I get rid of that square root of 2 on the bottom? Times the same square root, and if I do it on the bottom, I'll do it on top. What's 8 times the square root of 2? Whole number and a square root, put them next to each other. Okay? They can't multiply because they're different. So 8 times square root of 2 is 8 square root of 2. Over, now on the bottom, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. Now, one last step. One last step. If you can reduce this, because everyone see 8 and 2 don't have a radical, right? So just 8 over 2, we can reduce that. What's 8 divided by 2? 4 square root of 2. What about number two? So on number two, I got a square root on the bottom. How do I get rid of the square root of three on the bottom? Times square root of three, times square root of three. Now on top, what's nine times square root of three? Yeah, just right next to each other, right? Nine square root of three. Now on the bottom, square root of three times square root of three, straight up three. And can it reduce? Yeah. 9 divided by 3? Three? 3. So you know what's weird? This thing and this thing, you tap them in the calculator, they'll give you the same thing. But there is no calculator way to do these steps for you. Okay? So you got to show me this work. For real. All right. Uh, next. The calculator will not do that for you. No. But you can use the calculator to do multiplying and dividing stuff, but it's not going to do all that. Now, number three and four, more of the same stuff. Times the square root of two on the bottom and the top. What am I going to get on top? Seven square root of two, what's on the bottom? Can I reduce it? No, that's it. So, on number four, same thing. Square root on the bottom, times the square root on the bottom and the top. What's my final answer going to be? Eight square root of three over three.
Eight over three doesn't reduce. That's it. All right. House five, weird. Okay. So let's go. Same start. If I see a square root on the bottom, I'm going to go times square root of three, times square root of three. Now here's where it's different. So look on top. Square root of five times square root of three. If they're both square roots, they can multiply. So what's square root of five times square root of three? Square root of 15. Okay. Does everyone see the difference? If they're both square roots, they do multiply. Boom. And on the bottom, square root of three times square root of three. That's it. You actually cannot divide these. One has a square root and the other one does not. They're different. Leave it like that. Okay? Now, six looks even more complicated. But, but let me tell you, on number six, do you see something that we can actually reduce? So look, six over two, the coefficients, we can actually reduce six over two, right? Six divided by two is three. So let's, let's simplify the three. What about, do the square roots simplify, though? 3 over 2 doesn't. So let's hit 3 right. Square root of 3, square root of 2. So my first step, I just simplify the coefficient. And now we know we can't have a square root on the bottom. So what am I going to do? Times square root of 2, times square root of 2. Now, on top, kind of forget about that coefficient 3. These two square roots can multiply. What's the square root of 3 times square root of 2? Square root of 6, right? And then that 3 stays out front. So 3 square root of 6 on top. And on the bottom, square root of 2 times square root of 2? Two. 2. Square root times itself is the number without the square root. All right. Now, last two. 7 looks complicated. But I, I put this on here on purpose, okay? What do we always want to try before we start? I mean, I see the square root on the bottom, so you might want to start multiplying by the square root of 3, but don't do that. See if you can reduce first. Does 4 reduce by 2? What is it? Does 6 reduce by 3? Yeah, that's also 2. So actually, this is not what we're doing today, right? It looks like it is, but I want you to see. Sometimes reducing, you avoid having to do extra work, okay? Reduce first if you can. Last one. Number eight is kind of like number five, so uh, I need to get rid of the square root of seven on the bottom, so times the square root of seven on the bottom and the top. So what's going to be on top? Square root or no? Square root of 21, right? Because square roots can multiply. Square root of three times square root of seven is square root of 21. Let's see. And on the bottom, the 7. Do these divide? No. One's a square root and one is not. Leave it like that. Okay? Only the same thing can multiply and divide. Cool? Uh, that's the idea. So, I made your assignment short and sweet. Eight problems, one-sided. But you need to make sure you turn in all the other four from the last week and or so. So, they pass. All right. And if you did the front side of them, turn them in. Cool. Okay? All right. Let's get started on this.